the deadliest issue in the history of the world. Episode 2 The Caloric Lie How is improper labeling probably the most deadly issue in the history of the world? Well, because people rely on labels every day to make dieting decisions. You may be someone who doesn't care to check nutrition labels for any reason, and you may still have a claim if you get the foods your doctor orders you to. Because what numbers do you think your doctor is relying on in order to make his recommendation and to give doctor's orders on your optimal healthy diet? Now who is at fault? The doctor? You? Governor? Okay so I have to back this whole calorie is a lie thing up. How do we know that the calorie is a lie? Let me throw a few more facts at you, just to set up the example I noticed in real life, which the scientists do address in the 2011 study. Important, calorie is defined as the energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water one degree Celsius, about 34 degrees Fahrenheit, now usually defined as 4.2 joules. A couple things not as relevant to our discussion you still might want to know. Technically on nutrition labels and food packaging, the calories refer to a kilocalorie, which is a unit of 1,000 calories. So when you eat 2,000 calories in a day, you could also say you ate 2 kilocalories. Don't let it confuse you, because from here on out I am using the calorie the way most people understand it, as in 1 calorie equals 1 calorie. A joule is derived by multiplying the mass of the object by its specific heat capacity and by the amount of temperature change. Okay so I mentioned the upwater system which applies a similar method to the way a joule is calculated by applying energy conversion factors to the macronutrients, carbohydrate, fat, protein and fiber and technically alcohol. Hey buddy, what the hell is an energy conversion factor? Well, food calorimetry allows us to determine the number of calories per gram of food. In this activity, a piece of food is burned and the released energy is used to heat a known quantity of water. The temperature change of the water is then used to determine the amount of energy in the food. After hearing these words, a wise person might ask, what the hell does the test you just described have to do with the human body and digestion? Sure, it would be semi-relevant if the human digestive tract, including our dozens of gnashing teeth, the bacteria in saliva, the billions of gut bacteria, and other organ and intestinal tract processes, were just water, and every person's biological makeup was the same, and everyone did the exact same activities, see where I'm going with this. But this idea is completely bogus, and is probably the top reason at water, and therefore calories, make no sense. My own example of proof, discussing drip factor, which will be part of a very important list in part 3. Note, I am going to use meat in my example, because it better illustrates our point, and because the researchers of this phenomenon at Harvard used meat and sweet potatoes in their experiment about 11 years ago. The importance of this is meat's unique relationship with human evolution, even as compared to starchy vegetables. The FDA dictates that meat companies put the amount of macros in food when it is raw, on the nutrition menu. The labels usually must list the number of calories, grams of total and saturated fats and cholesterol. If a package label shows the percentage of lean meat, it must also show the percentage of fat, this is important because as many people already know, the amount of calories will differ between a raw piece of meat and a cooked piece of meat. But the way we view calories now, the cooked piece of meat should have less calories than the raw piece. 1 g fat equals 9 calories, means less fat equals less calories, hypothetically. Just thinking about it logically, as you cook meat you can often see fatty juices dripping from it, therefore less weight and less calories, hypothetically. For example, if you have a very fatty steak or hamburger, people might say, cook it on the grill to cook out some of the fat. Well, you truly are cooking out some of the fat, 
because it melts under the heat of the flame, oven or whatever you're cooking in. You can see it as oily around meat in the pan and if you let it sit, it often becomes like gelatin or white, lard like goo, especially when put in the refrigerator. In any case some of the fat from the meat will undoubtedly cook out of the food, but each gram of fat provides 9 calories. So how could it be that cooked food provides more energy, and therefore hypothetically, calories, than raw food, when the raw food has more fat and therefore should have more calories? Quick side note, water accounts for most of the other weight lost in the meat through the cooking process. Example of the previous example. Get ready for just a little bit of math. I'm sorry, I will try to keep it brief and simple, but I would reread it twice if hearing it once leaves you confused. I am going to write out the equation several times, but they are all the same. First of all, 1 ounce equals 28 grams. For ounce raw meat is 200 calories. When cooked, the 4 ounces of raw meat will become 3 ounces, due to fat plus water cooked out. So it lost 1 ounce, it went from 4 ounces to 3 ounces. Note the common agreed upon measurement for raw meat to cooked meat weight conversion is about 2 thirds, which is 66%, to 3 quarters, which is 75%, multiplied by the original raw food weight. So going from 4 ounces to 3 ounces would mean the food retained 75% of the raw weight, or in other words lost 25%, so our example would be 4 ounces multiplied 75% equals 3 ounces. Remember we said there are 28 grams in an ounce? So the food lost 1 ounce aka 28 grams. So let's say water accounts for 21 of those 28 grams the meat lost, and fat is 7 of the 28 grams the meat lost. That still means if you were to do a direct conversion, the 7 grams lost from the raw food from cooking should amount to negative 7 grams of fat multiplied by 9 calories per gram equals negative 63 calories, so during cooking the food should have gone from 200 calories to 137 calories. 200 minus 7 multiplied by 9. And yet, Harvard scientists say the cooked food would still produce more energy for a human. Not only are the two amounts unequal, but it is entirely possible that 3 ounces of cooked meat actually provides more energy than the 4 ounces of raw meat. So you're eating more than 200 calories by cooking the 4 ounces to raw meat to 3 ounces of cooked meat. But is it the same amount of calories when outside my body? Or does this question not make sense because it starts from the false premise that calories are the measuring unit of human digestion? More calories? Less calories? Should I have a different measurement for raw and cooked foods, as in a different unit other than calorie, or should humans apply a new equation to have more accurate food labels? But keep the calorie? Maybe both? To start out extremely basic and small as a test run, we can have meat companies use a formula and apply it to their packaging along with including what is on their labeling now and just labeling it raw versus cooked. This would be extremely easy, and the implementation system would be very easy, and honestly cheap compared to the human lives it will save. The equation could be something like, raw equals what is on the packaging. Cooked equals 66% to 75%, multiplied by raw calories. But of course, this does not solve the problem. Science would eventually have to start taking into account the difference in energy provided by raw food compared to the cooked food, ideally in each individual person, under various circumstances, as in counting for as many variables as possible, including drip factor, the way it is served, whole or not whole, etc., and then refactored to a certain weight, such as 4 ounces. 
But if the best we can get is a general reading of different aged women or men of a different weight, then that is what a person should be seeing on the nutrition label as a chart. It is as simple as that. Also, I know my equation isn't perfect, smarter scientists have already been working on one, and that it honestly sounds a lot like bomb caliometry, discussed in episode 4, but I am just calling it the way I see it. Plus, even if you applied this formula to our 4 ounce meat example, it still wouldn't make sense unless you could do thousands of tests, which the FDA should have been doing for a long enough time to have some results, at least enough to much better categorize some various metabolic processes among the classes we spoke of before, age, gender, activity level, and so on. If humans can't answer the simple objective questions regarding the calorie, then many, if not all labels are based on a long-standing scientific fallacy which may have originally been as accurate as science could get, but that is clearly not the case anymore and has left many people with no trust in science and science agencies for allowing to continue. The deadliest issue in the history of the world. Episode 3 is next in the playlist, or you can click in the bottom left of the video to get there.